right, it's really important to be able to read the landscape. There was a guy named J.E. Weaver who was a professor in the tall grass prairie, and he put it like this. Nature is an open book for those who care to read. Upon each hillside is a page upon which is written the history of the past, the conditions of the present, and the hope for the future. So whenever I've got a group of landowners out, students of quail as I call them, I always try to impress upon them knowing your plants and knowing how to manipulate them. Know which plants are important for quail and then know axe, plow, cow, fire, how we can manipulate that plant community to favor quail. So as I talk with landowners and I try to motivate them to learn more about plants and I'm successful and they say, well, do you have a good field guide for the plants for the rolling plains? I said, there's really not a great field guide right now, but I'm gonna show you how you can make your own with technology that you probably have on your desktop. We call it the digital plant press. So we talked about the fact that there really isn't a good field guide here for the rolling plains, but why not make your own? And you've got the tools probably on your desktop. One of the tools that you'll want to use is your digital camera. Everybody has these for taking photos of plants in the field. The other one, and the really neat part about this, is this flatbed scanner. Now these are not very expensive anymore. You can pick one of these up at the local discount store for about 50 bucks. It scans, it copies, it prints. We're going to use the scan feature. I like to marry this with my computer with a program I use Picasa, it's Google's photo management program. It's going to communicate the computer to the scanner and we're going to be able to put a plant on here. Here we have western ragweed, which is a staple for quail, very important plant for quail here in the rolling plains. I'm going to put that on there and then I'm going to put a little flat ruler in there just for scale. Now then I come over here to my computer and I'm going to import it. They ask me what I want to scan. I'm scanning basically a color picture. I'm going to preview it. I'm holding this lid down because anytime light gets in there, it causes a gray or a black image around the edge of my scan. I don't want that. So I'm just holding that down to preclude any light from entering. Okay, now you can see that's going to be the area that I'm going to scan. I can change that if I need to. Just drag and click it like that. But when I get it like I want it, in fact, I'm going to just, I'll scan about that much of it. Hit scan. Again, I'm holding that down to minimize any light that will be entering that. It's going to take it just a few seconds to scan that plant. And then when you get through, you're going to have an image that is going to look so realistic it's going to make you want to scratch it to see if it is indeed uh, real or not. That's what we're trying to do. We're going to save that now. Save that image. I've created a file called Digital Plant Press. I'm going to call this one Western Ragweed. Import. And now I'm going to have that in a folder. I'll build me a collection of those images, which I've done down here, and we'll put those together in a PowerPoint presentation that we can print from to literally make our own field guide for this particular ranch. Let me show you what's real handy about the digital plant press, and that is the ability to scan seeds. You can use your digital camera and get some pretty good shots of just the plants themselves, but you'll be hard pressed to get really good shots of small seeds like the seeds of this prickly poppy. So I'm going to put this seeds down here on the scanner. They're about the size of number six shot. Very small. Put my rooter on there so I'll have a scale. I'm going to get that preview image again so I can find out exactly what I want to scan. There's my image I want to scan. Again, I can adjust that if I need to. Hit the final scan button. Now, I typically have my scanner set at 200 dpi for plants. 
Sometimes I want to increase the resolution to 600 dpi or dots per inch for seeds. Makes a very large file. But I'll show you what we can do with that. Now there's my final image. Again, you can see what the uh, scale looks like there. And I'll save that one as prickly poppy seeds. Now then, let me show you what we can do with that. We can blow that up. If somebody sends me a seed and they say, well, can you identify this seed for me? I'll scan that seed and then I can blow that up fairly large and get a really close look at that seed. And for, so for diagnostic purposes, I can look at that seed. I can compare that to my memory of other seeds and I know that indeed that is prickly poppy seeds. And in fact, I can probably call that up to where I can see the fact that it's dimpled almost like a golf ball. And again, that's characteristic of prickly poppy seeds. So now I can take the plant scans of the plants themselves, the seeds of those plants, and sometimes a digital image from a field setting to give an aspect of what that plant looks like. That's especially important if I'm talking about a shrub where I could have someone standing next to it or my bird dog pose next to it, give an index of scale. I can marry all of those images on one page. And basically what I'm going to wind up with then is a collection of plants that makes for a very useful reference. It also makes for a nice coffee table presentation for your hunting lodge or whatever. So print that off on, photo, on glossy photo paper. You've got a really nice looking specimen and something that you'll be really proud of, something that'll be instructive to you as you build that plant collection.